Hello and welcome to this video from Client Engager. In today's video, I'm going to take you through workflow phases and checklists to help you work out how to build your workflows in Client Engager to be as effective as possible. So let's have a look at how we do workflows in Client Engager. Hello and welcome to this video about phases, checklists and workflows. The reason I'm doing this video is because I get asked quite a lot during the demos of how should I create my workflow within Client Engager. We've got two key tools in Client Engager to help you manage your workflow. One is phases, which is set out in your services section, and one is checklists. And I'm going to show you today how we at OnPoint Accounting, my accounting firm, use these tools to deliver a workflow that the most experienced or the newest team member can use quickly and easily. So let's get into Client Engager and have a quick look at that workflow and see what we're doing. So I'm in Client Engager, I'm going to go to my settings and I'm going to go to my services first. The way I look at things are we've got phases and that's where we assign each team member's responsibility and then we've got checklists and in the checklist is where we create the micro steps that create the phase. So if I go to limited companies, that's the task, the service I'm going to work on the workflow today in this video. I'm going to click on my pencil and I'm going to scroll down to my phases. What you can see here is we've got currently three phases. We've got collect records, we've got preparation, and then we've got filing. I'm going to add a new phase to this. So I'm going to add a phase in between here. I'm going to call it approval. And I'm going to save that. So now when I go through my phases, I've got collect records, I've got preparation, I've got approval, and I've got filing. Now what I am gonna do is have a quick look at the warning periods. So warning periods is basically when does this job on your Kanban or list view go from green to amber to red? So what this here is saying is once this job is 30 days within its deadline date, it goes amber. Once it's 14 days, it goes red. So what I'm going to do for the next step is say, right, well, within 20 days of the job being needing to be done, I'm going to change, I want it to go amber, and within seven days, uh, 10 days actually, I'll make it go red. Then I, I want this done within seven days, uh, 10 days even, I'll make this seven. five and three. So then we've got a declining uh, a number of days in which case the job keeps going from amber to red for its importance to get done. So that's how we set the phases and each phase is where we set the team member. So I'm going to say right the person in charge for this one is Helen. Then I want it to go to Peter and then I want it to go to Steve. And then I might get Helen to file it. So we're going to save that. So what I've done now is I've created each major phase of my workflow. And these are just, treat these as headings. So this is the first step. We'll deal with what's in that step in our checklists. But this is our first big step and Helen's going to do that. This is the second big step, and Peter's gonna do that. This is the third big step, and then this is the fourth big step. So now we've got our big steps, our major milestones, if you will, for our each work for this workflow. I'm now gonna go and show you how to do the, to, how I'm gonna build my checklist in the way we do it at On Point Accounting. So hopefully that'll come in useful for you. So if I go to my uh, checklists within settings here. I'm going to go to limited company accounts. Now in here at the moment is the checklist that comes standard with the uh, setup when you create a new license within Client Engager. I'm going to change this. I'm going to move some bits around here because I want this to be a better representation of the workflow I'm going to do. So if we go back to my phases, my first phase is collect records. 
So I'm going to create at the bottom a new section. Now I'm going to call this click records. And I'm going to drag that to the top because this is the first phase that's in my workflow. So I want my first phase to represent the name in the first part of my checklist. And then what I'm going to do is add points that create this section of the job. So the first job will be contact client for records. Then we're going to check that they're complete. Then we're going to enter them into a general ledger. So that's the first part. I've now collected, assessed, and entered my data into my general ledger. So that might be your QuickBooks, your Zero, your free agent, whatever it is. I'm just going to use generic terms here though. I'm then going to create my second phase checklist part of the checklist which is going to be part of the second phase which is preparation so we'll go back to my checklist i'm going to create a new section again preparation i'm going to add my first point i'm going to reconcile the bank now what else have we suggested on here Oh, I forgot any credit cards. Let's have a, I'm going to copy that, add the point, and do that. I'm also going to move this section actually in line because I want this section in order. It's going, so this section comes after collect records. So that's where that should be. Now, I don't need this bank section anymore. I'm going to create another bit. So I'm now just creating all the tasks I might want to check and carry out within the preparation part of my job. So I'll get rid of that. So I'm just going to get rid of all these because we've now got the idea of preparation. Let's go back to my phases again. What's my next phase? My next phase was approval. So I'm going to add a section. I'm calling it approval. So as you can see, we're building the checklist in order of the main headings relating to those headings in our phases. Because then each team member knows where to go to complete their checklist. So approval. We're going to get the client manager to approve them first. Then we're going to get the client to e-sign them. Then our second, our final checklist part was filing. Okay, so I'm now going to save that. So I've now got a new checklist, version 4 as you can see, which is in the same order with the main headings as my phases. So now what my team member will do, whether they're an experienced team member or brand new to me, they're going to get a notification to say they've got to do a job on their task list. And it's going to tell them client records. So what we're going to do actually is I'm going to show you exactly what we're going to do here. Okay, so save new version. So on version five there. I'm going to go to deadlines. I'm going to go to look at my limited company deadlines. 
and let's go to Smith's Tiles Limited. So as you can see, we've got our various phases here. So we've got collect records, followed by preparation, followed by approval, followed by filing. So my team member will come in and they've gone and said, right, I've got to do collect records. Right, what do I do there? How do I do that? All I need to do is go to my checklist. Right, I've got to collect the records. So have I got the records from the client? Yes. Have I checked and received the records are complete? Yes. Have I entered them onto the general ledger? Yes. Right, well, that's the, that's the end of this checklist for collect records. Okay, that must be me done. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to complete that step. The next person would come in and say, right, I've got to do the preparation. I'll go to my checklist. What have I got to do for preparation? I can see someone's already been in and done all this. So I'm going to edit my checklist. Right, I've now reconciled the bank. I've done that. I've done that. I've done that. And I've done that. Now, maybe you might want to tell your team that actually you've got to put your initials in the comments so we know who's done each job. Even though the phases tell you and the audit trail's there, by doing this, you can also see it on the checklist when you review the checklist. Right, I've now prepared the records. Now they've got to go to be, so I'm gonna complete that, yes. Now I've got to send them for approval. So the person that's going to approve them will come into the checklist and go, right, what have I got to do? I've got to approve them and then send them to the client. So let's check this. I've approved them. I'm going to send them to the client. Put my initials in because I want to show who's done this. And then I'm going to complete that. Now, let's for, imagine for argument's sake, we've had a little notification come up to tell us, yep, we've d the clients are happy with this and they've sent us the signed copy of the accounts through our e-signing portal. So I now need to go in and find out what I need to do next. So I'll edit one more time. Final job, file the accounts, done. So I know I've done that. Then it asks if you want to put any comments and you can either leave, do that or not. And it always asks, do you want? Do you think this client needs a fee review? I'm gonna say no on this occasion. Save. And now I'm gonna complete the job. So that's it, that's how we're using phases and then checklists in on-point accounting so that everyone's on the same page. Phases dictate the steps in our workflow and who's gonna do them. And then when we go to do the work, we can look at our, our checklist and see it's in the order of the phases, so it makes sense logically, and we can see what's involved as micro steps in each phase. So hopefully that's really helpful for you. Any questions, as always, reach out to us on our Facebook group, reach out to us on LinkedIn, and email contact at engager.app. I look forward to talking to you in the next video. Thank you very much.